spiritual sovereignty means to a lot of things. For starters, you have to heal all of that trauma. Trauma occurs if you want, if you don't believe in other lifetimes or past lifetimes, that's fine because there's enough trauma that happens to a person in this one life, lifetime that we that we have to deal with that can take I don't know, <coughs> heal a, the rest of the life. I'm a shaman. I, I didn't really introduce myself. My name is Beth, and I'm with Soul Fire Alchemy. That's my, my place of business. And I actually have a studio a couple of miles outside of the old city, so I'm not far. I'm out, out on the east side of town. I also do a lot of work with the Gratitude Bar and Buckeye Farm, and hopefully a couple of other places that I haven't had the opportunity to really meet with and talk to that you know I'd like to branch out and kind of Create, I'd like to see, you know, I'm new here. I just moved to Knoxville um, back August 3rd. So I'm looking for community too, you know. I think we're all here because we kind of look for our soul tribe. We look for other people who have a like mind and, and are interested in the same things. And we don't talk about the mundane life because we're tired of that mundaneness. We're tired of living in, a, uh, in this 3D matrix of go consume buy, have children, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Um, obviously, we stepped outside that box a long time ago, which is why we're here. And so we look for somebody else that's outside that box. So I'm no different than you guys, and that's why I'm here. And I loved the place where I was at, and I, I really love to discover what the community here is like. So I'm really excited to see what that community is like and to hopefully help create more of it because I think it's important for us to all sit in a circle and be no power, no hierarchy, that we're sharing power, but we're all each standing in our own power. We're filling up our own vessel, right? So you cannot fill somebody else's cup. You cannot be a healer to someone else. You cannot <coughs> minister to someone else. You can't cook somebody else a meal. You can't be a caregiver unless this cup is full, this container, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your body, everything, your mind. So that's part of what stepping into your spiritual authority. There's a lot of words you could uh, use instead of sovereignty. I just like the word sovereignty because it embodies everything that it, it is, right? Sacred witness, sacred hoop. Native Americans use that term, the sacred hoop. But basically, it's putting you in a place where you're not moved, right? So everybody's read that verse in the Bible, I shall not be moved. No, people make fun of it because they don't really understand what it means. But if you're walking around and, and you're doing your thing in the world and somebody is 
coming up to you and they're being nasty with you. Or you have somebody coming up to you and they're giving you praises and <coughs> lavishing you with all this beautiful stuff, right? They're trying to flatter you, perhaps. You're not moved by that either way because you know who you are. And you know what your boundaries are. You know what's okay for you. You know, I, this is me, this is who I am. This is what I will and will not accept in the way of treatment from other people and myself. You're accountable to yourself. You are fully responsible. That's the thing about spiritual sovereignty. This is the part that's not so popular because it takes the responsibility for who you are and what you say, what you do, how you feel, and what you think in the world. It takes that off of everybody else's shoulders and everything else's shoulders because it's squarely where it belongs, and that's you. You're responsible for that. So you say, well, yeah, but I had a really crappy childhood. I mean, I had terrible abuse that I went through. There are hor horrible things that happen to me. And so I can't help but respond to life the way that I do because I've been through this and it's made me this way. Well, if you're committed to your healing, then you don't want to say that. You want to rewrite that story because all that is is a story. It is a true story. We're not saying that it isn't. But it's one that you can change because all of us, we're wizards. We're magicians. We have that kind of power over space and time. We can go back in time and say, this happened to this child who was me, whatever, this 20 year old, whatever. But I love this person and I'm gonna take responsibility for giving this person the love that it never received. So that's an element, just one element of going back and heal healing this trauma and you're taking the responsibility for all that love that you never received or whatever it is that you needed, your needs that didn't get met. And you're taking it upon yourself to see to it that those needs get met, that you are filled, you're taken care of, that you're loved, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, the healing part has to happen first. So you go back and heal that trauma. And through that healing process, it is a process and we never get completely through the healing and we never get completely through the learning but I'll tell you one thing I had a near-death experience six and a half years ago and it completely changed and shifted my entire spiritual perspective I was in the hospital for two and a half months and I had lots of rehabilitation it took me about a year to get out of my wheelchair on out of off of the walker and they gave me a 20% chance of living two years without a liver transplant because I had so much damage in so much of my body. I was idiopathic. They didn't know why I had this terrible illness and it was very sudden. So I was left with this thought of, well, I'm going to die every night before I went to bed. And you know, how many of you guys in here by hand are a healer of some sort? I don't care if it's just yourself or other people. So those of us that have arrived on this planet have usually gone through some amazing amounts of trauma. We've had a lot of ordeals that we've had to go through, that we've had to get through, that we've had to overcome. And, we're, and I feel like as a healer, for me, and I don't know if you can identify, but I'm on a constant, for me, I'm on a constant string of how can I better myself? How can I be better? How can I be a better person? How can I do better for me? How can I do better for those around me? How can I help my clients? How can I help my students? How can I help my loved ones reach for whatever it is that's their highest and their best self, you know, their goal, their mission? What are they, what are they here for? And the answer to that, a lot of people say is, I don't know why I'm here. Well, that's okay. You got time. If the commitment is there, that's the thing. So my commitment was there. I didn't have anything else to hold on to. I did not want a liver transplant. I didn't qualify for one for a while, but then once I did qualify, I didn't need it because by that point, 
I had already started using what I knew as far as energy medicine because prior to that I had been a massage therapist and I've been, as of now, for 22 years, I've been in the alternative healthcare industry in one way or another. So I started off being a chiropractic assistant, was a massage therapist for many years, and on that road when this illness hit. So I started doing Reiki on myself and um, just other modalities of energy medicine because I had these, my spiritual team came through and started giving me this uh, visions and, and directives about what to do and how to direct the energy and just purely the power of my thoughts. I did a ton of research on epigenetics. I don't know if you guys have heard, heard of Bruce Lipton, but he wrote the book called, I think it's called the, Your Biology. If you're committed, so if you're committed enough to your own healing, right, that's, that's what it takes. You have, to have, you have to have that commitment because it isn't easy, uh, but it's worth it. It's so worth it because I got to tell you, I was born into a family. I was not born into a family where I was taught anything about standing up for myself. In fact, it was the opposite. You know, I was taught, I don't have time for you. Go, go play. I don't have time for you. Go take care of yourself. Um, there was a lot of physical abuse. You know, I'm sure all of you kind of share some sort of similar story along the way. And so I sort of, in a way, raised myself. Um, for a lot, you know, I had to learn how to be out in society and how to behave, and and I've had to learn all of these tools sort of on my own, you know. Um, but none of us can help. Our parents can't help what they didn't know, and they couldn't teach us the ways of health, health and wellness, and a good way to be and relate in the world if they didn't themselves know. All they knew how to do was pass along the same trauma. But guess what we can do? We can stop it right now here in this ancestral line and say it stops right here doesn't go any further past me, which is part of what I teach too, is ancestral lineage. So anyways, to, so that's what this means, is to step into uh, uh, your sovereignty, is to go back and start healing all this trauma. And there are ways and methods that you can do that a million. You've found all these amazing healers out here today. There's a lot of different roads that you can take, paths to healing. Everybody's different. Something different seems to every single one of you, right? There's no two paths that are exactly the same up the mountain. All we are is a facilitator of healing. You ultimately are the healer that does your own work. So it doesn't matter if you come to see me for a shamanic energy medicine session that I call Starlight Energetics, which is a combination of all of the tools that I have at my disposal as far as energy healing goes. And I fuse those together to make a customized thing for you because when you're on my table your team is with us our all of our teams right so we've got cosmic family we've got spirit guides we've got animal allies whatever it is that your belief is that's what we work with in your higher self and my higher self so what happens in that energy medicine session is solely dependent on that and so it's different for everybody it's different for everybody but it's pretty potent and pretty powerful it's transformational work for sure um, and so you can go that route. The other route you can go is, you know, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of taking responsibility for doing that healing yourself. It's, it's beautiful to go and get Reiki sessions and shamanic energy medicine and have a hypnotherapy session or whatever it is that you're doing. I think it's fabulous. And it helps lift up some of that heavy energy that keeps you blocked and keeps you weighed down so that it lightens that load so that you can start feeling more empowered and like, oh, and you feel a little lighter and you can learn ways to keep your own energy field clean and clear, right? Everybody knows about earthing or being connected with the earth in some way. So there's small ways that you can do, taking a shower, just simple things where you can visualize, <coughs> excuse me, all of the shade that gets stuck to you during the day, all of the, the heavy energies that you accumulate. So you can do those things yourself you can go see an energy medicine uh, person to do it. And those things are wonderful and they're helpful, but ultimately you are the one. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, you're the one that's responsible for carrying that through. It's like with my things, I will give you take home assignments. And it's up to you to go home and decide whether or not you're gonna work with those elements and continue that healing. And you'll come back and, and for another session if you need one, or you'll go see somebody new, or you'll enter a class and see, I want to learn how to do this myself. I want to learn how to build my own. This is a Mesa. This is a Peruvian Mesa, a Mesa carrier. 
because that Peruvian shamanism is part of what I practice, Native American spirituality uh, that I've been gifted. And, um, and then also, I actually learn from the spirits because I've been connected with my own lineage and I have deeply well, deeply wise ancestors that, that come through and they teach me their ways that they heal. And, uh, and, I, and I get, they want that me to carry that on. And every single one of you, I'm sure, has ancestors in your line that are just waiting for you to go, I think I'm ready. And they're going to go, <laughs> okay, how can we help? Right? And so that's another element of, of what I like to teach also is how to, to reach out to these ancestors and, you know, anything that you want to communicate with. I don't care if it's your food or the flowers that you pick or the grass or the trees or the water that you're bathing in or drinking or blessing with. It's all consciousness. And there's a way to live in what we call Aini, a state of Aini, they say in Quechua. It means sacred reciprocity. And when you're learning that walk, you're by default learning how to be in your own spiritual sovereignty. When we're standing in that place of spiritual sovereignty where we're full, we speak our truth, right? All of our chakras, we're living at the highest octave of each one of those chakras. We're not stuck down in the lower ones, right? So we are living at that highest body in these top ones. We're speaking our truth and love and compassion, right? We know how to love ourselves. We know how to put ourselves first. We know how to put others second, but in a very loving, kind, and compassionate way. We can see with this eye that doesn't just stop there. We hear with ears that we don't physically hear with. We feel things that we don't tangibly feel. We know things because we just know them. And finally, our connection is so straight up with our own higher self that our higher self in an instant can just be in our mind like that. And we're not stuck down in the fear and the trauma and the grief and the lack and limitation and scarcity and all the things that come with this, this traumas that we're carrying. And so to heal those traumas that we're carrying enables us to step into this spiritual sovereignty where we can hold our own and we won't be moved one way or another, you know. And we can receive the healing that we need and we can pour from that spot like a big, great, big fountain and fill other people with this love and this light and help them understand that they too are a being of light. They're a luminous being of light. You all are. You all have this power. And so my goal is to empower you to understand and know that and take advantage of <coughs> the tools that come along, you know, put them to work, put them to use. And then if you're not going to go out and teach or you're not going to start a Reiki practice or start a, you know, go and study shamanism or whatever, I don't know. That at least by living by example, people are going to look at you and go, oh, there's just something about her. That Wendy, you know. I don't know what it is about her. And then they'll be going about their lives, and then they'll meet somebody else, and they've got that same something. And it'll make them think, and they'll continue, and that'll ripple out. And then they'll start going, I want this too. <clears throat> and one by one, we will change people on this earth. One by one, just by living in our own, standing in our own sacred sovereignty, right? Our own sacred witness. Not being able to be, nobody can manipulate you when you're in that place. You have no desire to manipulate another. And so that whole rule, do no harm, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, that just is without even thinking. It just becomes as it is. It's just and everybody around you, they're going to be affected by that. Now, whether positively or negatively in their mind, you, you might lose a lot of people because the minute you decide that you're not going to be manipulated, think of all the people in your life that ain't going to like that. Um, thank you. So, I've got a table, uh, uh, you know, if you want some information, I've got, you know, I'm not doing any readings today or anything, but I am having some classes. So, if you guys want to come by get some information on that. I'm doing a shamanic uh, journeying class. We're doing beginners and intermediate and advanced. Um, and that teaches you, you know, a whole lot about uh, trauma healing and meeting your spirit guides, your animal allies, things like that. Um, and then also we're doing a journey through the chakras, which is you get to build a medicine bundle that's completely about your chakra system and uh, how you
you can reach that high socket with all of your chakras. And we'll end that with an Indian despacho ceremony. It's a gratitude ceremony right before Thanksgiving. So check that out too. All this is on Facebook. Soulfire Alchemy. You can find me on Facebook. Um, and my, my website is soulfirealchemy.org. So it's super easy to remember. But definitely stop by my booth and let me meet you and shake your hand, give you a hug. And thank you guys so very much for your time.